you for joining us. Woo! I'm Mr. Kramer, and that strange noise you heard was Juan coming from wherever the heck they are right now. I'm in my room. And tonight we are providing a service to you. Perhaps the most important play you have ever had the pleasure to witness. More useful than Hamlet. Slightly. I mean, who can't identify with being a prince and having the ghost of their father return and set them on a bloody path of revenge? It certainly helped me through my recent family situation. But could Hamlet teach you how to find toilet paper? No. Case closed. Will this play show people how to get toilet paper? No, but it will do everything else. Where we're going, we don't need toilet paper. I don't know about that. But without further ado, it is time for 10 ways to survive life in a quarantine. Ooh, can we do that again with a cool sound effect, please? We can try. That's all we're doing tonight. Behold, our show, uh, 10 ways to survive life in a quarantine. Method one, fall in love with inanimate objects. A great way to maintain sanity in these difficult times is to have a complicated relationship with an object. Let's see how Peter's doing. Yes, yes, I am here, I'm here. And I have been negotiating quarantine very well. In fact, I prefer it. And that's all because I get to spend my, all my time with my new best friend, Wilson. Say hello, Wilson. <laughs> He's shy. He talks alone when we're alone. Especially at night, but now he's in front of the camera and he clams up. That's okay. I can do the talking for both of us. Even though we had an agreement to both be talking on camera. But that's fine. That's fine. That's totally okay. <sighs> I'm not upset or anything. Not at all. What's that? Oh, now you got stuff to say, but just quietly and just to me? Oh. Now, if it's important, say it to everyone. All right, then. Is this how it's going to be? You're just going to make me look crazy in front of all my friends? That's fantastic. Anyways, me and Wilson have been getting along great. We go for walks to the closet and back to my bed. And sometimes this is super fun. We just stare into each other's eyes like this. It's magical. You're so beautiful, Wilson. Normally he says it back, which is nice. It's nice to hear that, you know, that validation of your feelings, but he's playing hard to get. I guess. It doesn't hurt. I guess I'm not enough for you. Is that it? Is that what you want me to say? Uh, well, if that's it, I, I don't need you. I got other friends. Uh, 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 uh. Meet Penn. I love Penn. And Penn loves me. I've been in love with Penn this entire time. It's great to see he's improving. Doing a lot better. And now Lou is going to share how his inanimate object gets him through the day. Hello? Is this thing on? Hello? Yes, it is me, Lou. You may not remember my name from school, because I was always the one sitting in the back, or getting it stuffed into backpacks since we don't have lockers anymore, or the one that I saw out gym class because I didn't like the outfits. And I have a special message for all the ladies. I know I wasn't on your radar. I know I'm not the best looking guy and you'd rather fall for Bryce, the quarterback of the water polo horse team or whatever. And yes, he's super attractive and talented and all that. But I have something that Bryce doesn't have. Oh yeah, look at this. This is a real deal, ladies. Four ply. Count them. This is your generic grocery store off-brand toilet paper that's the last thing on the shelf. Oh no. This is pure white gold. This feels like a cloud. 
or a possibly a Pomeranian, or a cloud of Pomeranian puppies. You know what I'm talking about. And it could all be yours. It's even had a picture of a baby on it. Well, they put pictures of babies on toilet paper. Babies aren't using toilet paper. At least no babies I've ever met. Are they suggesting that toilet paper feels like a baby? Because that's weird. Anyway, where was I? Whoa. Am I right? I'll be taking applications for new best friends after the show. In the meantime, dare to dream. Dare to dream. I'll be your friend. It's okay. It's over. I miss you, Forbly. I miss you so much. It's time for our second method. Method two. Performing your own musicals with your pets. That's right. You have co-stars with you in your homes. Use them. And you don't need to pay them except with treats. Ella shows us how it's done. I'm Ella, and welcome to the most realistic production of, production of cats ever. This is McCavity, the mystery cat. And this one, wait, where did that one go? McCabby will be playing multiple parts, I guess. I have more cats around here, but I think some of them are under the couch. Come here, run, tell Tucker. Come here, buddy. Ow! He's shy. I asked my mom if we could get 16 extra cats this show, and she got her car and drove away. I haven't seen her since. I'm guessing she went to get more cats, but that was three days ago, so I'm beginning to wonder. Also, if you would like to bring cats to my house, that would be amazing. Just drop them off in crates on my front doorstep, and they'll be loved and hugged and thrust into starring roles in this production. Now, as anyone knows, Cats is the story of the Jellicle Cats. These guys, once every blue moon, the Jellicle Cats get together to enact a live, a live cat <clears throat> sacrifice of one cat to the underworld, and the other cats all go on their way for no reason at all. And they sing and dance, just like this guy. No, stay with me. Come on, just one time. You can do this. <clears throat> Come on, buddy. Dance for mama. <laughs> this misery makes this better. <clears throat> They're learning, slowly. This is coming together. I only need a few more months and many, many more cats. Ah, uh, they're gone. I think that was much better than the movie. Definitely. And now it's time for method three. A big problem is keeping yourself occupied. How do you spend the time if not planning revenge? Revenge on who? You'll find out. Jolene has some answers for us in our third method. Fun with scissors or so much crafts. Welcome, friends. I'm Jolene, and I'm here to show a wonderful way to spend your time in isolation. One thing I like to do to manage stress in these, let's face it, stressful conditions. <laughs> Little joke there. I know it wasn't a great joke or anything, but sometimes it's the little jokes that aren't funny, and that's where the true humor lies. So, I like to do origami which is the traditional Japanese art or technique of folding paper into a variety of decorative or representational forms, such as animals or flowers. I learned that from the internet. I find origami soothing. Let's learn how to fold a paper crane, shall we? First, take a sheet of paper. Next, fold it. Then, you fold it again. And once more, just for fun. So much fun, just an amazing, amazing amount of fun. And then, um, I think it goes like this. Whoops, <laughs> not like that. That was a boo-boo. That was just a terrible boo-boo. Just an awful, awful mistake made by someone who's failing at this very soothing task. And, nope, not like that. Not this way either. Does this look like a crane? It's a, it's a crane, right? <laughs> this is a crane. This is a soothing origami crane. And I love doing this. Ugh. Actually, that part is soothing. I feel like I learned something. 
I learned not to go over to Jolene's house. No problem there. Let's see what Pascal's up to. Hey everybody, Pascal here, and I am learning all kinds of new things in this quarantine. Like, uh, how to hide from the rest of my family. And the best place to go is out here on the patio. And today I will be showing you how to build a birdhouse. A birdhouse? That's right. I know what you're thinking. Why do birds need houses, Pascal? Don't they build nests for themselves? Aren't you just encouraging the birds to be lazy and not do their own work by providing subsided housing for them? Think about it. You don't build squirrel houses. I don't see anyone building a deer house out here. Those animals have to live outside like, like animals. And all of a sudden you're privileging birds over other animals? What the heck are you doing? You know, you actually make a pretty good point there. I mean, do birds need our help? Those dudes can fly. All the other animals can't fly and they have to walk on the ground like idiots. And we're making stuff for birds? Birds poop on your head. Do other animals poop on your head? No. Does a deer come out of the woods, climb up the side of your house, lean over the gutter and poop on your head when you walk outside? No. Deer do not do that. Not to mention the fact that birds are free, right? I mean, they can fly anywhere. It's like they're super beings and I'm just stuck to the crust of the earth like a fool. They're not in quarantine. They're not worried about getting a stupid virus. They're basically running the show right now. Everywhere I look outside, everywhere, it is birds and no peep. Okay, there's a few people over, over there, but, you, but you, you get my point, okay? Birds are in charge and I'm supposed to make them a house. I'm supposed to use my time in here to create something for a lazy, ignorant bird that can't even figure out how to make its own nest. No, no more. I will not make a birdhouse today. Yeah, so I do my best thinking out here on the patio. It's nice to have a hobby. Venting is a great hobby. My favorite. Method four. I'm good at sports now. No one can stop me. Remember when you were a child and thought you were good at things? Yes. And then you encountered other children and realized you were terrible at those things? Yes. Well, now, without competition, you can be the athlete you always had delusions of being. For those of you just tuning in now, we've got a barn burner, the Libertyville Monarchs, led by the all-conference, Pat Johnson, are down by two points to the Motorville Motorheads. It has been a stunning display of athleticism from Johnson, who has scored a season-high 87 points, grabbed 42 rebounds, and rebounded 27 blocks. I've never seen anything like it. I haven't seen anything like it either, Dave. We're witnessing the birth of a new basketball goddess. This is like the first time I saw LeBron James, except so much more than that. She's already the greatest basketball player that has ever lived, or ever will live or will ever live in an alternate dimension. And here we go. Johnson inbounds to Johnson. She spins. OMG, the moves. The moves are ridiculous. The ball handling on display is magical. It's magical. She throws through the legs, and then through the legs, and then over the head of the defender. She launches from a long distance. Just off the rim, Johnson grabs the rebound. She puts it up. <laughs> and she grabs the rebound again. No one can stop her. The clock is counting down. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. One and a half. And a foul. That's it. We're gonna have to assume she made this free throw. And the Monarchs have won. The crowd goes wild, even though it's social distance at six feet apart from each other. They're losing their minds. They're storming the court. 
this is the greatest moment in basketball history. I can't believe what I've just seen. Ah! And they're carrying her off the court. I didn't think she was going to pull that out. Shocking. I thought the motorheads that had that one. They totally blew it. I lost a lot of money on that one. But now we're on method five. The plays of William Shakespeare. That's Shakespeare. No, you heard me. Should I play the Roman fool and die on my own sword? Whilst I see life, the gashes do better upon them. Mac there, turn, hellhound, turn. Mac duck, of all ducks else, I have avoided thee, but get thee back. My soul is too much charged with the blood of thine already. I have no words, my voice is in my sword. Thou lunest labour, I bear a charm life, which must not yield to one of one, one of woman born. To spare thee charm, and let the angel whom thou still had served tell thee, Mac duck was born from a duck. Oh no, shoot. That right, sucker. Booyah! Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. What part of Booyah do you not understand? Yeah, yeah. Now what? But it's not just terrible tragedies that are fun to perform with stuffed animals. No, wait. It is terrible tragedies that are most fun to perform with stuffed animals. How about a terrible tragedy where everyone dies? He had took everybody up, grabbed this, killed Hootlet's father, and then married Queen Fertrude. And Hootlet's father showed up, and he told Hootlet, hey, I was killed, you need to go out there and revenge my death. And Hootlet was like, it's crazy, man, but sure, Dad. Uh, and so then Ho Hootlet killed Verity's father, for absolutely no reason at all. So now, um, and he was like, hey, man, you killed my dad. I liked my dad. And he was like, I don't care, my dad's dead too, what? And so then Hootlet's girlfriend killed herself because Hootlet was mean. And now Baratees and Hootlet are about to duel, except Ravisus has uh, poisoned the cup in case Hootlet was thirsty, and he has poisoned Baratees' blade. So it's simple. <clears throat> come, Baratees, come, my lord. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, one. Nope. Judgment. A hit. A palpable hit. Told ya. Didn't count. You missed me, dude. He just said a hit. A palpable hit. I didn't hear that. He said it. He totally said it. One. Oh, come on. I am thirsty. <laughs> no, Fortune. Poison! Shoot! I'm dead! No! Oh no, my thing! Oh, villainy! Seek it out! It is here, Hootlet! Hootlet, thou art slain! The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbated and envenomed! The king, the king's to blame! The point in venom too, then venom to the work! Dang it! Ah! Ah! The rest is silence. Uh. Ah! And pretty much everybody else dies too. Ah! Face cutting blood! Ah! Well done! Greatest play ever. I think we've had enough of senseless death though. Method six, catch up on your studies. Fun. Super fun. Hi everyone, I'm Allison and I'm here to help you. This is a difficult time for everyone, but I think the best way to forget about it is to, everything is to put your nose down and really focus on school right now. I am and I love it, I'm learning so much. Yes, I have three little sisters that are driving me crazy, but guess what? get lock and just open my doors and put on some headphones and drive into trigonometry and ignore their little screams. Numbers are my friends now. Speaking of friends, I'm actually running a special right now for math help. 
if you need someone to do your math homework for you, just email me and I will do it because I do not want to do anything else. It's math, 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 math here all day. <laughs> So happy. Speaking of math, I'm only charging $3.55 per assignment. Then I email the assignment back to you and you put your own name on it and turn it in as your own work. I offer bulk grades as well. 10 assignments for $32, which is a, a saving of 10.94%. Again, math. I love it. May is also my special algebra sale. 5% off of all algebra homework. Look for more Hello? You're saying that's illegal and I, I shouldn't be talking about it online? Oh, okay. You did not realize that selling math homework was illegal. This changes my business plan, plan significantly. Luckily, I've been studying economics, so I know when something is illegal, it becomes a lot more expensive. Therefore, my rates has changed. $22 per assignment. I will be using the extra revenue to hire goons who will force collection policies and they will be breaking your legs in a respectful manner. This is so much fun. Seriously, buy now while you still can. I am your only hope. Without me, you are doomed. You won't regret this. It's good to see some of our students putting their minds to brilliant criminality. It's really the American way. But maybe someone out there is really studying well. Hey, thanks guys. My name is Torrance and I'm here to show you exactly how great distance learning has been for me. So it's, um, it's been a thing. It's definitely uh, been a thing. Uh, so the first thing I do is log into my email. And right now my computer is not on speaking terms with other computers. So that's cool, but that's all right because I can log into access a help page at the district with me, which is currently offline, which is fine. So I can't get to that. I've also forgotten my password, so I can't get a new password sent to me because there are a lot of requests for new passwords or something. I don't know. There's only so much internet, I guess. It doesn't reach my house. That's cool. That's fine. I am working through it. Mostly, I'm just trying to imagine what my teacher is trying to teach right now since I can't log into anything or get anything to work or get anyone to help me or scream loud enough for that rescue workers to find me. So anyway, my teachers are not assigning homework. At least my imaginary teachers aren't, because they are very respectful of my time and want to make sure I have the most fun quarantine possible. But I keep trying, kind of, a little bit. You know, just making an effort every day for a good five or six minutes and then calling it, there's no use bashing your head into a wall over and over again, right? At some point, you just have to assume that learning is not for you. To be honest, learning was not for me before this anyway, so I guess my teachers are not surprised I'm not able to log in. Although, my imaginary teachers are super chill about it. They're really impressed. Oh shoot, I think my connection is screwed up. Low battery, what does that mean? My heart grew three sizes watching that. The children are our future. Terrifying. Which brings us to method. Seven. Get really involved in the lives of squirrels outside your window. With limited options for television these days, you can watch the Wild Kingdom outside. Shh. Don't ruin it, okay? Hold on. Oh, darn it. They're not there, but they could come back any minute. So, let me tell you about the latest update between Kim and Kanye. It's been off the chain recently. So much drama. I can't even have the time. I'm watching and I'm like, I shouldn't even be watching this. I shouldn't even be watching this, you know? This is intense. I've been taking notes. Here we go. They're so beautiful. Perfection. With those soft, puffy tails and little noses. They don't have a care in the world. Such a beautiful, happy home. Kanye goes out and gets the acorns and gives them to Kim. She loves him so much. Day two, when Kanye was out today gathering nuts, a new squirrel appeared, Stanley. He's sleek and skinny like a sewer rat. I hate him so much. But he goes up to Kim and Kim gave him acorns. No, 
Those are Kanye's acorns. He found those and she gives them to Stanley. Later, Kanye comes home and where are all the nuts? Oh, Kim ate them all. I guess you furry cow. But Kanye doesn't know what's going on. He goes back out because that's the kind of squirrel he is. He knows nothing. Day eight, Kim went out for acorns today and Kanye stayed back. Stanley arrived and it is on, y'all. It's like squirrel MMA in the tree. Get him, Kanye, get that thieving rat up and down the tree. Stanley will not be back, mark my words. Stanley is back, or day nine, Stanley is back. Kim gave him acorns, they are trash. They are so much trash. Day 12, Kanye is the king of trash. Kim went out today and two red squirrels showed up, Bridget and Jennifer, and Kanye was all about them. I have seen, I've seen squirrels do things that I didn't think squirrels did. I can't even with him. No wonder she was giving nuts to Stanley. Stanley's a prince. Day 15, Milo arrived. Milo is one sweet looking squirrel. They're falling for his nonsense. Day 17, I can't even with any of them, but I'm still team kin till I die. And then, oh, who is this bunny sniffing around? This will not end well. And it's not just squirrels that have the drama. I never thought she was going to make it. It was impossible. The tree branch is probably 20 feet from my window. There are simply limits to what can be done. And this, this was beyond. I was standing here when I saw her. She was getting ready. And I was like, you'll never make it. Turn back for Pete's sake. Stop what you're doing. This is madness. She didn't listen. Probably because she doesn't speak English or hear things. Maybe. I don't know. There's no way a medium spider can make a web 20 feet across. What are you trying to catch, idiots? Birds? But I tell you something, people out there. She left from that branch with a filament of silk coming out her backside, and she caught the breeze just so and soared to my window. She made it. I was still skeptical. Sure, she can make it across once, but web requires you to make many, many trips. So there's no way you're going to be able to make it back to that tree. Give up. You're doomed. You'll never make it. Friends, she launched herself again and again. She made it to the tree. I was stunned. Was this the greatest spider athlete in the history of the world? Am I watching the Michael Jordan of spiders? Is she not bound by the laws of his? And yeah. I realize I'm using female pronouns here for this spider, but I'm pretty sure she's a lady since all the boys get eaten immediately after mating. You learned something. I watched for seven hours as that spider beat the odds strand after strand after strand. And I thought to myself, she didn't listen to the naysayers. She didn't care what the crowd was saying. She didn't, she knew what she was capable of. And there's a lesson to all of us out there. Don't let yourself be afraid. If you can dream it, you can do it. If you believe you can build a deadly trap 2,000 times your, own, your body length and murder as much life as, as possible, you can do that. Then later, a bird flew through it and destroyed the whole thing. So I'm not sure what that means. I learned that nature is not boring. And now we come to the most popular survival method. Number eight, sleep, live in pajamas, eat chocolate, binge watch shows. Or your weekend is not your life. I was made for this. This is my moment to shine because I've been preparing for this my entire life. Saturday mornings, I don't even think about getting out of bed 
before two in the afternoon. And even then, I just make my way to the fridge, get something to eat, and then go back to my bed to have my breakfast. That's how I roll. Most days I don't change clothes. I shower on Tuesdays. So let me lay it out for all you newbies out there. First, you're gonna wanna make sure you have a stash of batteries near you for your remote control. Nothing is worse than having to actually get up to get new batteries for your remote. That is a nightmare nobody wants to see, honestly. I also suggest having duplicate remotes in case you lose the first one in some type of cushiony place. I know not everybody is on that level, but I have four identical remotes in this room right now. They all work the TV. They can all handle Netflix. I'm good. Next, you want to consider your comfort level, which is key. Mine is currently set to Jello, which is I want to feel like I'm submerged in Jello and just hanging there, suspended in a pillowy lime green emulsion. I want no pressure on my limbs at all. If you have zippers on your clothes, you're doing this wrong. Also important, how much food do you have in your room right now? Double it, then double it again. Check it, I got so much food in this room, I don't even know where it is. I roll over, I crushed something. That goes into the mouth. Safest place for your snacks is in your stomachs. Most important of all, do not lose hope. You could achieve supreme laziness with just a little bit of effort. Remember, it only takes a little bit of effort now to make sure you never have to make any effort again, ever. Peace. I'm going to bed. They give me hope. We can get through this if we just don't do much. Exactly. But if you do want to do something, there's method nine. Spooky stories. When we set out, we didn't know if we were going to make it back. Our supplies were running low. We had no choice. No choice. There were rumors you could get what you wanted, but only if you waited. In line. And then you got a cart and you were let into the Costco. Every so often you could hear if you listened hard enough. Squeak, squeak, squeak. But as soon as you stopped, nothing. Then you'd walk, squeak, squeak, stop, nothing. I realized it was a squeaky wheel on our cart. It was pulling us to the side. There's no way to go back for a new cart. I had to fight it. It kept pulling and pulling. Where was it taking me? To the paper goods aisle? And that's when I saw one single package of toilet paper. The one package that no one wanted. I reached down my hand. Do I dare take it? Why was it left here? Is it cursed? And I heard a ghostly voice. Rachel, I froze. No one was near me. Rachel, who was talking? Rachel, it was coming from inside the toilet paper package. I took it anyway because it's toilet paper, right? Every so often when I'm in the bathroom, I hear squeak, squeak. I'm single ply. Of course, of all the methods, there is one that is guaranteed to be the most effective way to deal with life in the quarantine. Megalomania. That's right. The belief that you are the absolute center of the universe is a great way to deal with crises. Let's take a look. Hey, it's my birthday. It's me, your favorite friend, Uru, who didn't talk home that much. And I sent out my invitations to my party, and I guess no one wanted to risk their life to come over here and celebrate my entrance into the world. So that's fine. That's totally fine. I don't need you to come over for my very special day that only happens once a year. It's totally meaningless, right? But I'm dealing with it and throwing a party for myself. 
because if there's one person in the world that you can trust will love you through anything, that's yourself. Yay me! Happy birthday to me! Yes! Yes! Let's see what I got for my birthday. Oh, I don't know what this is. You shouldn't have me. Hey, Uter, it's your birthday. I spared no expense. This is from my heart. Thank you, me. Ah, it's my cell phone. This is amazing. It's already loaded with all your contacts and photos. What? That's so thoughtful. How did you know? I know you so well. You do. I can count on you. I'm always there for you, unlike those other people who didn't come to your birthday party. Darn other people. Other people let you down, Uter. That's not true, me. <laughs> There's probably a lot of other people out there who want to support me for my birthday. They probably already sent their presents in the mail. <laughs> right, right. You probably already sent your presents in the mail. And I'm sure they're on their way, aren't they? <laughs> Let's see what else I got me. I wonder what's in here. Open it, open it, open it. <laughs> it's money, so much money. All the money I have in the world is yours now. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm sure all the people out there have sent me money, right? <laughs> and I'm sure they're mailing it to me right now. Probably in the mail. Lots of birthday money. Lots and lots of it. Because that's what friends would do. It's a good thing you stole all their credit card information from the files at school. Shh. They're going to be really surprised. That's the best part about birthdays. The surprises. Well, it looks like everybody needs to call their credit card companies. So really, the last method is steal? <laughs> no, it's just ask for gifts, forcefully, if need be. I see. Well, that's all the time we have. Wash your hands and your pets and small children and birds that fly into your house. Thanks for joining us. This has been 10, Ten Ways to Survive, survive life, life in a Quarantine. quarantine.